right, coming into Vegas. Yeah, I'm on my way home. It's day eight, so I get cut short. Actually, I'll be home late. Uh, after midnight, so technically it'll be nine days, but it'll still be not ten. It pisses me off because I could have been recording all day today. We finally got the sound, we got set up, and I got basically one song done. Because I was going to redo the track, the guitar tracks on Eternal Darkness. But then I slowed it down. I said, dude, wait. It's at 100, 110 beats, you know, per minute. Or, you know, 110. I'm like, no, no, no. Turn it down to 92. And as soon as he did, I'm like, that's Eternal Darkness. Or, whatever song this is going to be, it sounds a lot heavier and better. Plus, I was using his uh, Les Paul standard. Uh one of those oh honey top friggin uh scott seymour duncan jv's sounds friggin heavy so went ahead and did two tracks and then i was gonna try i was trying to put an outro lead but i couldn't uh get what i wanted a cross between randy and ace freely and it just kept screwing up and then I got the phone call saying I needed to be home tonight. I'm like, son of a bitch. So here I am, on my way home. I got to a hotel last night at like 1.30. I stayed awake till five. As soon as SpongeBob came on, I was out because that just knocks me out now because it's so stupid and boring. And then I got up at 9.30. I think I've said this already. So now I'm here. But I had to stop in St. George because uh, I was driving. Every time I get about 75 miles an hour, the tires are shaking. I'm like, oh, well, maybe one tire is low. So I'm, I go everywhere. There's nowhere to get air. Everything's broken. And so... I pull into this, you know, Michelin tire or Bridgestone, something like that. One of the two. They're all the same. And uh, I'm like, dudes, can you check the friggin' front tires? You know, one's low and the other one might be a little low. And they were. One was at 20 and one was at 25. So they popped them up to 30 PSI. And he goes, I still think they're not balanced. I'm like, well, how can you tell? He goes, I could just tell. Because there's no weights on the thing. They were never balanced. And you always have to put, a, you know, I'm like, yeah, you're right. And the place I went to is an idiot. But I had no problems. I had no problems like this. I'm just cruising and then, brrr, you know, the friggin' front wheel, uh, steering wheels is like shaking. So I'm like, okay, dude, whatever. So he puts it on, and uh, one was way off. And apparently, because I put on a lot of miles, I I'm, I'm almost put 2,000 miles on this trip. I usually don't do that. It's usually, well, yeah, about 2,000, I guess. But uh, we did a lot of driving, me and my kid. There's Trump Tower, buddy. Trump Tower. If you don't like him, shut up. I'm tired of hearing about it. You know, the Democrats got, uh, apparently, because I really didn't want to watch the guy that was recording my, the stuff, was watching, you know, the results come in on one screen and then recording the other. And I'm like, dude, doesn't he lives in Utah, so... He was uh, concerned for a few things, but he voted uh, independent or constitutional, you know, throwaway vote. I'm like, so what? If you didn't vote for a Republican or a Democrat, you're throwing away your stinking vote. So who cares? So, I don't know, whatever. So anyways, it's cool, George. Vote whatever you want, you know. I'm hardcore one way and that's it. And my way is not even in existence anymore. So I don't vote. 
the last time I voted was, uh, you know, last presidential, and I was, uh, please, okay, so look at the, it's, look at all these, because I see these videos of these, you know, Vegas is dying, and these plane, these buildings are half built, and uh, this and that, it looks pretty good to me, I don't see no dying buildings, or buildings that are half built, or, there's one, but it's being built. They're just tripping out because there was a little recession when, uh, you know, it was really getting bad at the end of Obama because he was killing this country. He really did try to kill it. I don't care what anybody says. It's not just because he was Democrat and he was not African-American. He's uh, Ethiopian. So you still haven't had your first black president. You had your first black first lady, but not president. You had a half Ethiopian uh, Islamic terrorist and half uh, white hippie drug addict. And thankfully both of his parents are no longer with us. So there's the Delano and there's Mandalay Bay. Yeah, my cousin's like, yeah, I got to see the window where they got. I'm like, dude, that's not something you want to really, you know, aspire to see, but whatever. See, this is one building that they were talking about. Oh, it's stuck. You know, it looks like you're building a friggin' stadium, but who knows what the hell it is. I think this is that one that's supposed to be, I don't know, who cares. Vegas is just, it's too big. It's too big. I remember in the 90s and early 2000s, I'm like, okay, this is enough. Stop. Nope. I mean, you're living out in the middle of, this is non-supported. If something happened, say Mover Dam gets bombed, which could easily happen. It would take a hell of a bomb, and they really are, you know, strict on it, but Say just something happens. Earthquake. Boom. Dam's gone. This place is gone. Done. Their water's gone. Their electric's gone. Everything's gone. And, they're, and if it happens in the middle of summer, they're dead. So they're all going to be running to California, of course. Which is now a is horrifying... Uh, socialist country. We got what? Who's it? Who won? Gavin? Oh God! So Shelby, there you go. Nah, I won't talk politics, right? Remember, no politics. It's just it's hard to when his election happened, and I didn't even I didn't watch. I just watched a little bit until I started seeing the West Coast light up, and I'm like, I'm done. Bye. Don't watch it, don't need to. If they want to get in, if the other side wants to get in and just block everything so nothing good happens, you know, whatever. That's your uh, problem. I don't know if I'm supposed to be in this lane. <laughs> oh, uh, what am I doing? All right, I'm gonna stop taping. This is Vegas. Day eight or nine. Let's see. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, day eight. Which will so I'll technically be home on the ninth day. I told my parents, you know, unless there's a death, don't call me. But you know, you're kind of obligated to help your parents when they're older. And if they need help, they need help. So, here I go. Uh, it's Silverton. I remember when that was like the end. There was nothing. Then they built that thing where Jerry Lewis did it like his last telethon before he kicked off the gold, the west, nah, whatever the hell it's called. Nah, I'm done. I stay at Whiskey Pete's and I come in here for the shows and shopping and whatever. Cruise the strip. Go back to Whiskey Pete's. I'm fine. 
because the days are done when you come in the middle of the week and get a really nice great suite for like a couple hundred bucks or a hundred bucks I remember 10 11 years ago uh, when me and my wife we'd meet in Vegas because I live you know Utah Cedar so she'd drive a couple hours I'd drive here and we'd meet at the Hilton and stay there for four days and yep hopefully her and her husband are watching this now boy man all she saw was <laughs> she was plastered up against the window looking over the strip and I was standing behind her making sure she wouldn't fall over so uh South Point, that's what it was. Uh, Alright. And then see, then it just turns into Henderson. And Henderson used to be a little dot. And back in 92, 3, 4, 3 or 4, I came out here with some fat chick. She loaned me a nickel. I ended up winning almost a thousand dollars. Went from nickel slots to quarter slots. And stayed on quarter slots and won about, I think, 800 and something, almost $900. And then she goes, well, I get half. I'm like, no, you don't. You get a nickel. Beep. Okay, here's 100 bucks. Shut the hell up. I need half. So I said, well, look it. I don't know how much I got. Let me, you know, she didn't see me cash it out. I gave her like 200 bucks. And I wasn't working that much making that much money that see that was 94 so that was before I was 96 is when I started raking it in 95 is when I got a good job at uh, I was working for Lakeside Medical with my sister which was not bad and then uh, I got picked up in the studios and then that was great me and my friend were both like making tons of money we're buying houses everything's going good what could possibly happen I get in a wreck the bag leaves his bag is just a slip and uh, you know he divorced her because and won and got alimony because she's such an idiot and then <laughs> mine I just I could care less. I just let her go because I had to recover from the damn accident. So, why do I always get talking about that? Because I guess it's the major changing point in my life. There's two. Stopping music and getting it out of that and going into, you know, film industry. And that was my big change. And then also coming back to church and stopping all the stupid crap I was doing. And then getting married was a stupid idea but I did it because we would have been great friends but not married and then the accident the marriage was already over the marriage is over before the accident really technically and in, in every way it was over but we were I was driving up to get back with her to marry her again and uh, so we were separated what was it we were separated or divorced see my, mar my marriage my mind is fried because of look at that you're just looking at nothing okay enough talking who cares everybody's heard this story I don't care I don't even give a crap anymore and we're out of Vegas alright later Next one, I'll be uh, shooting my Glock and Zizix. Zizix. Come to Zizix, where you can clean your body, mind, and soul. Look it up. It's, good, it's an interesting story how uh, Zizix is the last name in Elf. And literally the last, or the last word in Elf, and it's literally the last word in the dictionary. I, no one knew what it was for a long time, and then I found out, and then Hugh Hauser did a friggin' thing on it, like, 
10 years ago or more and now these other idiots are doing it like they're discovering what Zizix is come on it's been a part of the you know California University California system for years since the 70s so okay Gene Prim Los Angeles Gene story there would be me and uh, my friend were bailing out of LA because the riots happened Rodney King said can't we all just get along and me and him well, <laughs> Rodney King was not a redneck but he said that and we were all watching it in a bar in Burbank when they used to have actual bars and I just looked at him like dude let's get out of here because all you do is you look towards LA we're in Burbank a suburb and you could just see the smoke just big black columns of smoke because they were built burning their own neighborhoods that'll show us that'll show the cops they won't mess with you again you burn down your own neighborhood oh, brother so <laughs> I know I know whatever I got my opinions everybody does but uh yeah, so I'm like, dude, let's get out of here. So we grabbed two cases of beer, talking about dumb, and we finished them before we got onto the 15, got more beer, and he was in wearing his little truck, my friend Gary. And as soon as we hit, I think, the first bridge, right, the one we just passed, because that was like we were getting close to Vegas. And he was going to try to get to his dad's house and borrow money because we'd already blown it all at Whiskey Pete's and the other one up here that's now gone, the showboat thing. And uh, he was broke. And I had 40 bucks, $20 in each shoe. And he knew I had money in my shoes, so he... he tackled me in the friggin uh, casino here and pulled my shoe off and got the 20 threw it down and blackjack and lost that I'm like what an idiot I go you owe me 20 bucks okay dude so we come flying he's doing 100 miles an hour in his stupid truck Beep! we get pulled over and they were working or something so like this thing the concrete thing there was one over on that side of the freeway. So they pulled us over and they did a test and he was wasted. So they're taking him away. He's, and they're like, so can you drive the truck? I'm like, yeah, no problem. He's like, well, it seems like you've been drinking. I go, no, I'm fine. He goes, okay, all right, walk over here. And I fell over the concrete barrier. He goes, yeah, you're, you're good. Because you'll be going in with uh, the tow truck driver. He can drop you off somewhere. I'm like, what? With 20 bucks? I go, how long is he going to be in? Well, it depends. At least two or three days. I'm like, what? So this is the riots. So we get over, we're trying to escape the riots, not knowing that they're rioting here. But in the old crappy part. And uh, <laughs> so he gets thrown in jail one of like the only white guys there and he just sat he was a big dude so it didn't matter no one messed with him and uh, I don't know if anybody's been to jail but it seems like every time you go to jail and you're in that big room and there's one damn toilet there's always a drunk Mexican hugging the dang toilet so you gotta kick him away or just ignore him I swear every jail I've been in which is several. <laughs> you know, this is my 20s. You know, and 30. And 40. 40 was a mistake, though. The, that was a setup. But, uh, I'm going to get over this jack ankle. Anyway, so, he got thrown in jail. And I stayed in the worst. It was called the Fez. And it was right across the street from where... Uh, 
they built the Luxor, and it was called the Hacienda, I think. And they had like 25 cent beers. And uh, so I went over and I laid down my 20 bucks and I said, keep them coming until I say stop. Or no, I said, keep them coming until I'm done with $10. So he said, you got $10. I'm like, okay. I go, where can I get something to eat? He goes, you know, the big giant hot dogs down the strip for a dollar. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go down and get one of those, we'll be back. So I go down and get the hot dog, eat it. Come back, drink some more beers, and I got five dollars. I haven't paid the guy at the Fez, because I told him I didn't have any money, but my friend was bringing up money, and I gave him my something. My social security card, which is stupid, but gave him that and said, you know, I ain't going anywhere. I'll pay you. And it was like 12 bucks a night. It was horrifying. I'm in one of the rooms of someone set the bed on fire because they let their crack pipe. They left it on the bed and when they passed out and the crack pipe started the mattress on fire. They pulled the mattress out. Then another guy flooded his bathroom and it <laughs> oh the fez so that was a nightmare but then my friend came up George the guy that was with, you know recording with last night he came up got me then my friend got out of jail and then we spent one night here and I partied and the guy that was in jail slept and then we all went home the next day but we we're trying to get out of Los Angeles because of the riots and he ends up getting thrown in jail with everybody that was rioting and I stayed at the Fez for three days and then one night at some other the sweets can't remember something sweets not bad they're actually pretty they were they're gone now but they were pretty cool and uh, Aspen Vegas is cool now. It's just not, it's too expensive and it's too stupid, resorty type of. It's, eh, I don't like it. That's why, you know, when I got that, you know, thing to go see Penn and Teller, I stayed out here. Because I, I had a reservation at the Rio and uh, uh, passed to see Penn and Teller. I said, hey, I got, I mean, I'm going to see Penn and Teller here tomorrow. Well, that's fine. You're going to have to go somewhere else because, you know, some Chinese freaking company, and telling you, watch out for this. They bought out MGM, which MGM owned, you know, they own like 11 or more hotels, and the Rio is one of them. So MGM sold out. They were putting people in. Caesars and in the Rio. So I had the room I had reserved, boop, gone. And they were charging people, I think, full price, and it was a Tuesday, and it was like fifteen hundred or twelve or fifteen hundred dollars. I'm like, screw that. So I had to stay out here. This is 2016. I stayed out at the Lucky, not the Lucky, Gold Strike. For three nights. Went and saw Penn and Teller. That was cool. And then the next time I came out, uh, Gold Strike is remodeling, so their prices went up. Didn't have a room. I'm talking too long. So it's all a bunch of horse shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm talking way too much. So there's Gold Strike and Prim. I talked all the way through Vegas. No one's going to watch this. I don't even want to watch this. How much did I... Oh, dude. 24, 6 minutes. Whatever. I'm just going to put this up like day whatever. Vegas. Driving through Vegas. Don't watch. <laughs> Alright, lady! Peggy Sue's. I won't be stopping there. I ain't stopping anywhere except for to shoot and to pee and get gas if I have to. I'm pretty good right now. 
Oh, so anyway, did I say so? I had to get my damn wheels balanced. They put the oil, the uh, air in, but they said your wheels aren't balanced, so they balanced them. And they said the uh, this wheel shakes. It's uh, just a little bit of you know. Uh, what is it called? The uh, whatever it's it's giving out. I got to get it re replaced. I'm like son of a. I go. Will it make it home? He goes. Oh yeah. There's a very small chance that it'll fall off or lock up. I'm like, what? He goes. Well, it's not. There's just a little give in it. It's not really bad. That's not what's causing the shaking. Because see, they put air. They both have 35 pounds, and it's balanced. They put like a half, half uh, ounce on that side, and like. I don't know how much on this. So, or no, half on this side and something on that. So, yeah, it needed to be balanced. Friggin' idiots didn't balance it or... He said you could have run out just that much rubber coming up because I got these wheels like four Utah trips ago. And each trip is about 2,000 miles round trip. A little over 2,000. This one right now, I'm at 15, 1,570, 67. Oh, so they still haven't built anything. So there used to be like a paddle wheel thing here. That's where he pushed me over and stole my money out of my shoe. Looks like they're just building the gas station up. That's stupid. Or they built another gas station. What is that? Boy, they build things fast up here. That wasn't even here a few months ago. It's a giant, stupid stock. Unbelievable. Who is it? Because this is not Gold Strike anymore. It's uh, Elvis Tribute Weekend. I'm going to have to freaking go here. It's, it's uh, terrible. Terribles. You know, terrible herbs. That's who, that's what that is now, Terribles. But yeah, I'd like to stay at the Terrible Hotel. Uh, nice. Okay, done talking, bye. What's that? That's the friggin' light. <laughs>